That's where we are now. It can be a lot of fun if you let it. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> it looked like he's having a good time right now. That freeze frame fuck. <laughs> Oh, how you guys doing tonight? Good. Yeah, yeah. I like the <laughs> damn. Why you have to be that aggressive? Good. That's the second time you've asked. So, so I'm like, Maybe I just give a shit. You don't. Maybe I can. <laughs> Come don't. on, man. No, Maybe no, nobody's buying that. See, <laughs> y'all see? I tried to care. They said no. We ain't gonna allow you to do that. We want old good asshole Corey right there. So hey, we ain't I, say that either. No, that's what you said. <laughs> okay. That's what you pushed me. That's where I got to be. But you know something. I was a little behind, and y'all were nice enough to come in and get things going. So I'm not going to waste your time anymore. I'm not going to sit up here and lag anymore on things. We're going to get right into the movie reviews. Oh, my God. Somebody was looking at the internet, and they said, man, they doing good times. And then, and then they got mad because they said, man, what? It? Man, they appropriating everything of us. We can't even do a remake of Good Times without casting white people. <laughs> white that, that goddamn Rob Patterson, that vampire, he gonna be in Good Times the movie? <laughs> He's playing JJ. <laughs> yeah, he played JJ. John Goodman is James. <laughs> <laughs> he made Robert Patterson and JJ uh, uh, dynamite. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I glitter. <Yeah. laughs> he got a glow about him. <laughs> the white people are moving into the ghetto. <laughs> but no, take the S off of it. There's a difference between Good Good times and good time. I knew that some people can get that confused. This is a movie where Rob Pattinson and uh, Robert Pattinson, all his friends call him Rob. And Rob, I'm going to call him Rob. <laughs> Rob Pattinson, in this, he's really trying to make a great departure from playing, what was it, Edward or what, did, what the hell his name was? Yeah, yeah Edward. Edward. Edward, Edward, Edward called the vampire. Like you don't know it. I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, what, what was it? Uh, Edward, would you, Robert. What did you call him in your fan Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was he again? What was Edward calling his name? Was, I mean, Rob Yeah, I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> but y'all do, I see. <laughs> Not me, though. I don't like that shit. I only gave the first one a mad name was I only got in the theater with Tony that night. <laughs> But other than that, I don't know nothing about that vampire <laughs> shit, that Twilight. I don't know nothing about that. But no, nah, man. Edward, I'm sorry, Robert doesn't want to know anything about that anymore either. Everybody's committing the guy. Maybe not everything is a success, but Robert Pattinson is out there trying to do these different projects, not mainstream projects, and these roles that are giving him different things to do to test his range. And we've seen him this year alone do quite a few different things, but this is probably the most different that we've seen Robin Pattinson. That is not him right there. But in this movie, he plays a street hustler who decides to go to the big leagues and do a bank robbery. The only thing is, he's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> and, and his, he's stupid, and his brother is mentally challenged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His sidekick is his retarded brother. Yeah, they, oh, wow. And they try to do a bank heist. And from that point on, and this is the first five minutes of the movie where things go completely horribly wrong for them. And it's him trying to dig himself out from this situation in one thing after another. The biggest thing that he has to do right now is that he wants to get his brother, his mentally challenged brother, out of Rikers Island because he said, man, th they don't understand that this dude is slow. He's going to die over there. Mm -hmm. So it's a race against time, not only to evade the police who are kind of on to him at this point that they've done the robbery, but also to try to get the money in a very short amount of time, $10,000 yeah, get his, to, to bail to, his to brother get, out. Get it to the bail, bails bondsman. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's a very suspenseful movie. It's a very, very odd movie too i can probably say you're not going to see anything like this this year let's go ahead and take a look at good time which is what no one is having in this movie <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be back with i think just my review and yours Mark. Yeah. all right this place where we are now it can be a lot of fun if you let it you're gonna have a good time <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it looked like he's having a good time right now. That freeze frame fuck. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you something. This is a brilliantly uncomfortable movie. This movie is amazing in how it combines two things. It combines the, the surreal with... The extremely real. I mean, with this film, what you have is you have this uh, this whole thing. With it. From what I understand, they're going through Queens. 
And it all starts them trying to do this bank robbery, but they're going through Queens. And this is a this this goes it starts in the day, it goes into the night, almost into the next day. And to the morning. To the morning. And we're not I mean, it is a nightmarish vision of Queens, New York. But it's still making you so much a part of it. Like you feel detached until you start seeing the people that inhabit this world, which feel like extremely real people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's almost like they got extras and just let them be who they are. And these are, and if that's the case, these are some of the best directors of people who are non actors that I've ever seen. Because when you see these real people in here, that, you know, it, it, you could, you could sit back and watch this world. And watch everything that's happening because all this stuff that's going on is so exaggerated and so bizarre. And you can sit up there and kind of like keep a distance. But when you see all the people that they have in here who are people on the street, the people who work stores, the people who are who are just passers by, you it almost gets it, you watch it for a little bit. And if you watch just little segments by itself, it has and I'm saying just in little segments. Just little chunks. It feels like, oh, this is a documentary until it goes back into some crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> and, you know, and it's really pulling you in and making you feel like, man, I could get lost in this too. And I don't want to be here in this shit <laughs> with these crazy people. <laughs> and it is such a dark, dirty, grimy film uh, with dirty, grimy people in it. And people going to be watching this and they're just going to be like, oh my God, this is so serious. Man, I was laughing my ass off to this on you. He, he was like the one person you could hear laughing in the theater. Because <laughs> uh, I was just watching the stuff. It didn't even occur to me to laugh at it until I could hear him back there. <laughs> you see the violent crowd? Yes. yes. That small ass that theater small, you were small, laughing in. Man, they put in that small ass theater. That's about the size of this room. Oh, they put like in some Cape Fear shit. <laughs> yeah. <Nah>. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I, I didn't want to because I'm going to tell you, I, I'm just going to go out on a limb here and say that they meant this to be a comedy. This is probably the darkest comedy that you would tell. see. It really it, is. It, it's so hard to tell. Every person in here makes some decisions that are so stupid. Humanly so. <laughs> not, not stupid in that like, oh, come on, nobody would do that. Yeah. But you go, nobody who's smart would do that. But a dumb person would. And man, of all the ways you could have gone, you could have chosen you to call, you the situation. Did this. You picked that. Man, I'm telling you, I love this because the reason why this is the, almost a comedy to me is because, I mean, like we said right from the beginning, they set it up. Uh, a dumb guy and his retarded brother rob a bank. That's yeah, a joke. Yeah, and that's, that's not, the setup for this movie. It really that's is. The, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm laughing my ass off at this because, you know, I'm not trying to equate mentally challenged with stupid. You know, no, I'm not. No, I'm no, not. Don't get me wrong. Because because uh, honestly, this is a movie where I, I the, the most fascinating thing to me about this movie is that for all the suspense that's there, I, I find the, none of the characters likable. Like, <laughs> like, like, it's one of these things where like. I don't like you. I don't like you. I feel bad for you, but at the same time, eh, yeah, yeah. Like even the mentally challenged brother, you don't like. Yeah, yeah you don't even like him. He's full of shit. Yeah, even there's, there's, there's points in there where you're like, eh, you know what? You need to take your ass back to that, that hospital. Yeah, there's a there's a point where he gets his ass beaten. You kind of like, man, you have it coming because you just need to learn to sit your ass down. He's like, right. he walks into the room with all these thugs and prisoners, and he's like, hey, who turned the TV? They're like, man, we watching this. Get your ass on back there. And he's like, no, nah, you can't do that. I want to watch what I want. To watch, yeah. said, you better sit your retarded ass down right now. And he's like, Oh, I'm gonna turn the TV. And they beat the fuck out of him. You yeah. just kind of like, okay. you like, yeah, yeah, like, that's going to happen. Yeah. And, uh, 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 Robert uh, Pattinson, his character, uh, Connie, I forgot his last name, he's short for Constantine. Yeah, um, so he's the he's the hero. And you see how, outside of robbing the bank, he wants to do good or he, want, he wants to not be an evil guy, but he's a cancer because. Everyone he comes in contact with, he leaves worse off than they were. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if he just if he just walked in here and brushed up against you, somehow that would lead to a, a truck hitting you. Man, or something, he, something Jesus, bad man, seriously, <laughs> he like he doesn't mean to, but people die around him. He takes souls. He crushes souls he's of the people. Bye bye, man. man. No, he's he <laughs> is yeah. Mars right. He's a fucking poison. Mm -hmm. This guy, and that's the thing about it that makes it so funny because not only is he a poison, <laughs> but he's Stupid. He's stupid. Yeah, you he's know. stupid. And in his head, he's just trying to do one good but thing. But he's, he's dumb. And the thing about it is that 
<laughs> the stuff that they do here, since he's dumb, he's doing dumb things. And these dumb things are on a Three Stooges level. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, some of the things that happen in here happen in situation comedies. The mix-up, you know, the whole thing of, oh, there's even physical comedy in here that occurs. The reason why, it's, it's like watching a Three Stooges episode with realistic, tragic consequences. Yes. <laughs> and that's, you're like, there's no joke, you know, there's no punchline to it. No. Yeah, you, you rake the saw across Curly's head, and instead of the saw teeth bending, and it, he yeah. just bleeds out yeah, and yeah. dies. Guys, <laughs> Mo is paralyzed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you poke Curly in the eyes with your fingers, you blind him. <laughs> you know, this. Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no man and they were, and that's why I, I sat in there and I just I said I can't see this any other way there was a scene here where right like, again in the beginning I laughed and I, and I felt so embarrassed but fuck it I couldn't help it Robert Pattinson and his brother are just they, they had just done the heist and they are trying to walk away they're trying to look incognito look, look, right cool. now. Be cool. And the cops show up beside them. And these guys are pretty much busted. Of course, his brother decides to run. It's what happens when his brother <laughs> runs near the, <laughs> near the end of it. I'm sorry. Y'all going to think I'm evil. Y'all going to think I'm trash for doing this. But I'm sorry. What happens to his brother is almost like slapstick comedy with realistic consequences. Wait, what, what did we do wrong? No, hey, wait. you with the black sweatshirt. Yo, my man, turn around. He's all right. We didn't fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I ain't that retarded. <laughs> He's like, I'm gone. Look like my man on the couch. <laughs> hey, David, can I talk to you for a moment? He gets up and runs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I, See, I, had, I had seen the trailer already, so I knew that was going to happen. I didn't know point. what this movie was about <laughs> okay. when I saw. It, I didn't know what the fuck was going on. So, and I've been, I was sitting next to some people, and, like, and, they, and the dude next to me gave me that whole that like I'm just going to stare and not give this asshole the attention. <laughs> I'm not going to give him the pleasure of noticing him laughing at some serious shit. But I am so sorry for those who are listening. His mentally challenged brother. Rob Pattinson went through a sliding door. He went through the proper side. His brother went through the wrong side and crashed the window. And they then, like I said, they treated it like it was real. His face was all sliced up. Yep. He was jigsaw at the end of that. Yeah, he, yeah, he pretty much yeah. was. Man, it pulls you in. Like I said, if you noticed in that scene right there, uh, I don't know how they cast their people in this movie, but you had the cops that pulled up. And the cops, when they pulled up, seem like real cops i mean it's it's also you know the way that they film this too it's sometimes it's out of focus they gradually get into focus as some of these scenes are handheld but there was that i mean there are just so many scenes that look like people who you just don't normally see in a the movie there's a part where rob pattinson it's creep this movie just gets creepy sometimes oh, yeah there's a part and i mean it just has a horror movie feel to it there's a part where robert pattinson is in a He's in a hospital and he's trying to uh, he's trying to rescue his brother uh, who is uh, in intensive care for getting beat down in that the TV incident. Mm -hmm. And they just had this one scene where he's in a room with an old woman. She just said, help me, help me water. And he just gives her some water. He's just staring at her. And it's a real looking 90 year old woman. It's tense because you don't know what he's going to do to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just staring at her because you don't really know him at that point. Actually, I didn't have any doubt that he wouldn't harm her. I just felt like that's just odd that he's just staring at her. Funny because. He has potential, his yeah. character in the movie. He's, he is a smart guy. You can even kind of tell, like, they got the idea of the bank heist kind of halfway, right? Uh -huh. Like, if they just weren't so dumb in the execution, like, they got masks and everything, if he, and maybe it chose a better partner. But Robert Pattinson's character, he has potential to do well in life, but he, he confines himself to being a street hustler and a con man. Yeah. And he's not that good at it. He's able to be smart enough to scheme himself out of one thing only to get himself <laughs> into something worse because he's so stupid and just makes his stakes higher and higher. He keeps digging a hole. Well, there was a point where that bank heist could have just gone smooth. Each situation that he finds himself in, you don't really see it coming or going that way and you don't even know how it's going to work out that's that's probably why it was fascinating robert pattinson is great in the film i you know I, this is this is another different turn for him this is this is a side of him that you have not seen i've seen interviews with him i've seen him and you know i've read things where he doesn't he doesn't want to be you know the handsome guy who's getting the leading man roles he want he truly wants to act mm -hmm. and you know it's funny because looking at him this year alone We've seen two different sides of him. We saw him in the Lost City of Z. Don't say Z. Oh, that's right. Where he was like a, a, a scholarly, scholarly British guy. Yeah. 
and very different from what we've seen him right now. I have a lot of respect for for Robert Pattinson. He's actually uh, he's showing that he really is serious about acting. He's becoming if he can if he continues along this road, he'll be the equivalent of Tom Hardy, who I think is a guy that changes in every role you see him and is a great actor. Uh, the other person, though, that I really have a lot of respect for is the director, or one of the directors, is directed by brothers, Josh and Ben Sabdi, uh, Safdi, and uh, Ben is the one that plays the mentally challenged brother. Right. And he looks nothing wow, like he, he does. he looks nothing like he that. He looks nothing, I wish I could, I didn't want to take any clips because there were different interviews they did in Cannes, and I don't want to rip Man. off anybody's clips, but he sounds nothing like that, and he looks nothing like that I brother mean, he I, played. I mean, you know, watch his performance, I, I knew he was one of the directors, I didn't know what he looked like, but I just thought, I'm sure this guy sounds nothing like this, and this is a great performance because he's he's selling this. Man, when he's in the movie, he's what he looks like. Man, he's a hipster. <laughs> yeah. In interview, they ask him, "So what you think?" Well, my inspiration was, you know, Forrest Gump, and you know, he's a he, he's not because in the movie, he's like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, he's he 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 plays it like a Neanderthal. Yeah, he, he really does. He's got that whole thing of never making eye contact when the therapist is talking to him. Just ask him simple questions, and he's still for a long time, and then just see tears rolling down his. Face. Oh yeah, no, like, he's he, no, he's the, he's brilliant. When you see him in the movie, it's almost like he physically changed. I'm yeah, looking for, I'm looking for a scene of him here where I can get a good shot of him because if you look at him in the movie, even he he even has like a he made his brow right even, even bigger. It was like, you see this he, yeah. like he I don't know how much went into that, but for this guy that did a role where he didn't have a whole lot in the movie and didn't have a whole lot to work with. That's amazing, man, his performance. Mm. I had a lot of admiration for him. But the one that's... <laughs> and let me tell you something. You think that dude is crazy? His real-life story is even crazy. Really? There's a guy that they run into. The movie's already going wild, but the movie becomes a fucking acid trip once this character comes in. They got this guy that... Uh, and I'm not going to say he comes out of nowhere. And from that point on, the movie goes nuts. Uh, this guy, Buddy Duress, is, uh, it, is a guy that they've worked with before. Uh, these guys have done a couple of movies. Uh, one of the movies that they did before this was a movie called Heaven Knows What. And Buddy Duress played like a heroin drug dealer and addict in that. What? what? Since you had me tonight, remember? And I was going to pay you back. How much do I got to give you in total? That guy... <laughs> you see him in that? He's the same guy in this, no, except no. more insane. He, this guy, after that movie was done, the movie's about, I didn't see the movie, heaven knows what, they, uh, but it got a lot of good reviews. It, it launched the career of one girl in the movie. I'm but, dying to but, see it now. But, but not him, because while it was launching the career of one girl, he was at Rikers Island for a drug charge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, so he's playing himself. He's playing himself. Yeah. Man. Okay. I'm studying a role. <laughs> he's looking like, are you surprised? <laughs> but, but yeah, he got out like I think in 2015, and they put him back in this movie. And in this movie, this fool is insane. He he has a backstory where he tells you what happened to him, and that story leads you to think like, yeah, this guy, he's going he's it's already bad enough for Robert Pattinson is in. He's gonna make this guy even worse. It's funny because when he comes in. And he's it seems like he would come in and go out because he was there for, you know, one thing. And he goes on that backstory. And I was like, damn, they sure are letting him just ramble on his backstory. It has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> you don't realize how much that's going to come into play. Man, it, 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 I, I don't really. We can't say anything. I know. There's so much. You can't I mean, say. when I say it turns into a Three Stooges episode. Yeah, by, like, by the time he comes on, it is. It, it is, man. I mean, even looking at him like he's a heroin addict far as gump. I mean, he. <laughs> I don't think when you hear his backstory and what he did and how he ended up in his condition that you see him in the movie, oh, yeah. it is uh, <laughs> you. The guy shows up, as I said, the guy's name is Buddy Duress, and he, uh, when he shows up in the movie, let me see if I can find a picture of him at some point, because when he shows up in the film, he looks like a creature. <laughs> he looks like a Frankenstein monster when you see him. And when you hear his backstory, how he got there, it was like, wow, why'd you have to show up now? Because Robert Patton is already in trouble. You're just going to make his life a whole lot worse. Oh, there he is. When you see him, when he shows up, he has one eye. <laughs> he's beat <laughs> yeah. down. He's bloody. And the whole backstory behind that is crazy. And when I say it's a Three Stooges episode, it's complete with, like, the spook house. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it is. The person who's seeing shit. I mean, it's, it is insane, man. 
And now that guy, whenever he was on, he just made me laugh so much. Yeah. No, but by that point, it, nobody could fault you for laughing. No, I, I mean, I, I, you know, because it was kind of clear at this point that yeah, this really is somewhat of a, mm-hmm. of a, of a, uh, of a, of, of a comedy. Yeah, how did that? Uh, I forgot her name. The actress in this movie, like they keep showing her a lot in this trailer. Oh, Jennifer Jason Lee. Yeah, yeah. How she's did she not do? in it that much? Oh, okay. Yeah, she, I mean, she's great. I mean, she, you know, I mean, she's a veteran. She's good in everything. Okay. And she, she's good in it, but her role is very small. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jennifer Jason Lee. She's. And she, and her role in the movie, I don't want to spoil it again for anybody. I'll just say that she's a very insecure older woman uh, <laughs> who's about to get conned with uh, Robert Pattinson's character. And the, she's in it for like about seven minutes, man. And she's, she's brilliant. Okay. I, you almost want to see their story continue. But just to let you know, you don't. Is, you know, so. <laughs> she's in the trailer. That is That's it. That, that is it. She's like, hi and bye. And the other person that was really good in it, the captain. <laughs> Captain Phillips, the captain now. Oh, right. What's his name? No, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm his name. <laughs> Man, his his story. There's so many different turns uh, that this movie takes, and his, his story the way it ends uh, up. <laughs> like I said, Robert Pattinson, his character's a cancer. Everybody he comes across ends up like that. Worse off, way worse off. Way worse. I was a billionaire this morning. <laughs> I mean, it, it really was like he, just, he showed up to work and just and did his job what he was supposed to do. <laughs> and Robert Pattinson ruined his life. He did. He ruined, I mean, he, he took he, over his life. Yeah, he ruined his life. <laughs> yeah. Within what two minutes? <laughs> This movie is fucking brilliant, man. I'm telling you, it's amazing. I I can't wait to see this again. There's even parts in the movie where people die. I was looking. I was man. I was on. Yo, Martin, what the fuck? Because <laughs> there's a death that's it's funny and it and it shouldn't be, but. <laughs> I was hoping you would see it my way because yeah. <laughs> I'd seen it in the trailer and it looked horrific. But then when it happened and you were laughing, I couldn't help but think of how funny it was. <laughs> I mean, you want to feel for these people, but these people are so ignorant and they're so dumb. They're like, you look at when people die and it's like, man, that was going to happen no matter what. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's that feeling like, you know what, if it didn't happen to you here... It would have been in the next. <laughs> that you minutes. a darn award, man. <laughs> that was going to happen no matter what. Yeah, I'm. I, I'm. I really am nailing this home because you really have to go in there with that mindset. The filmmaking behind it is just so tour de force. If I'm, if I can get fancy on you, because everything that they do here to make this seem like a really eerily surreal world and that takes place in the familiar, uh, they try right down to the music to do. Uh, the music is done by just a weird artist. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He looks. This dude looks like his like like the music he'd make. Uh, one old tricks point never. It's what this guy's name. Is. Uh, that sounds like a, a Simpsons parody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he look. Does he not look like his name? Yeah. What's your name? One old tricks point never. Thank I'm you. I'm not calling you that. <laughs> yeah, no. your name is Ned. Get the fuck out of here. Show me your driver's license. <laughs> Yeah, but his music, I mean, this is you you don't get any more avant-garde than this guy. His videos are crazy. He brings in celebrities in his videos just to sit there. That's Val Kilmer. That's what I thought. Batman. <laughs> yeah, but this is, you know, the music that he makes is sort of that that uh 80s that 80s uh, synth music. Okay. That goes on through the whole thing. That's why it kept giving me that 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 Giorgio Moroder feeling yeah. um, of his movies or stuff he scored back in the 80s and um yeah, it, it reminded me of that and a cross between that and uh, a lot of Scorsese from the 70s, but just not as stylized. I would say the, the thing about this movie is that it can make you too uncomfortable sometimes. Uh, and I and, No such thing. And, and, man, you know what? That, but it, it, something happened where I knew where it was going. But again, it comes down to they make these people feel too real. They got a girl in here who's brilliant. She is a, a 16-year-old girl. And her name is, I think her name is Talia Webster. And Robert Pattinson starts out just a real casual friendship with her. And then he starts crossing some boundaries that he probably shouldn't. And it's just like that moment, I was like, ah, man, I, I don't know about this. This is where I'm feeling. <laughs> you don't this, know this about where this. I, this is where we, I'm feeling. We see what this dude is all about. I know, man, but point. even then. Well, you, you were still trying to like him. <laughs> no, I wasn't even trying to. I, didn't even, I just know. I, at that point, I was like, yeah, this dude's a dumbass, but you should know better than this right here, man. Come on. Man. Like, if, R. Kelly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. She didn't get swept up with him. She would have got swept up with, by R. Kelly. 
Yeah, and and, and you know what? She's at his trial. Yeah, <laughs> and it was and it felt like that her life was about to be ruined too. But it was just this whole thing of like they really they really do make it real real sketchy, man. It's just it feels slimy. It don't feel it doesn't feel oh, nice. Yeah. You talk about Martin Scorsese, and I was thinking about After Hours. I was also thinking about that that uh, movie that we were all surprised about that critics hated, but we really liked. It was a uh, Paul Walker movie, uh, Running Scared. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is another one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah it reminded me of something like that, too. That's an under underrated movie. Again, it's one of those things where critics didn't like it, but I really think it was a good movie. One of Paul Walker's better movies where he was acting. Yeah. Maybe right. that's why we liked it. Might it might be his best. Yeah, I think so. Uh, these guys also have a lot of appreciation for them, man, because we saw that uh, small clip from that movie, Heaven Knows What. But these guys, I, I want to go back and watch the films because they're on the come up right now. And they started out just like real, uh, very indie filmmakers who were getting a lot of uh, a lot of attention from their first films. Uh, one I'm, uh, I'm really curious about called Daddy Long Legs because it's way different from the films that they've done before. It's almost like a like a, a family, a, a family, a family, a family, a family indie comedy. Are you there, father? Yes. Well, you have some parenting to do. Do not recommend me in front of my own kids. Fuck you. <laughs> but they remind me of the Dupless brothers with more uh-huh. focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. With more story. Yeah. Uh, and, and more of a unique vision. Man, these guys, I'm a... I love this movie, man. I love these guys. Without seeing the trailer, you have no clue what's what's happening. You don't know where it's going to go. But I would like to watch it knowing where it's going to go now, and probably without so much laughter, <laughs> you know. And, and the watch only laughter more. was coming from you. <laughs> well, hey, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I want to. I want to be. I, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I want to watch it without that asshole Corey. <laughs> and, yeah, I, wanted, I wanted to detach myself from myself. No, I, 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 I think it's. Um, it really is going to be one of the most unpredictable movies that you will see this year. When I said I've seen nothing like it, I mean I've seen nothing like it as, as far as. I cannot tell you uh, uh, at what turn this will ever go. So, full price for me. Very much a full price. I almost want to give it a better than sex. Yeah, that's what I thought I was about to hear. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to hear that too. You know what? You know what? I will. Oh, no. no, 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 no. You know what? Okay, I, then I will. <laughs> no, because you know what? It's going to be a movie where a lot of people are not going to see it going that far because it is sort of a smaller film. I'm surprised it'll even... It's a tiny it's, film. It's, gonna, it's a tiny film and it will go under a lot of people's radar. It's not going to be seen by anybody. Probably no one's going to even know, gonna know about it by the end of the year. It's going to be that one movie they're like, oh yeah, Robert Pattinson was in that when he blows up some other movie. But yeah, I give this a better than sex man when a, when a when filmmakers can go out there and really do something different and a critic like me sees it that sees everything and has to say yeah you guys got me with this that is something to be commended for yeah i give this a better than sex because there's hardly anything i can go in here and say that i did not like about it i love this movie well shit um i guess i gotta disagree with you I, I can give it better than sex. But I will give it a high full price. Because oh. <laughs> uh, you know what? The biggest thing for me with this movie was how much of a surprise it was. And it's that that real big pleasant, pleasant surprise. Because I, I kind of knew what it was. I mm-hmm. had one impression of it of being a full-on comedy. But it played out, played out mm-hmm. in ways that I just did not expect. The world itself and what was going on was enough to make me really enjoy it laugh uh feel tense and yeah all, when it's all said and done i was like man i really want to watch this again yeah no i i even read one review after i was done because i was like man i wonder what other people are thinking because i just don't know and there was one critic who was just like a good time was not had by this critic and i ain't oh, even saying brother. no i'm not i'm only saying oh, man i'm saying fuck yeah. you for going out your way to do that <laughs> yeah come on you ain't gotta be shitty about it <laughs> you know when they wrote that they were like nailed it. yeah <laughs> they just got it they got up on the desk yeah yeah, yeah fuck you edward cullen but yeah, people, I give it a chance. If it's not your, th- if it's not your thing, I get it. But if uh, you want to see something different, go out there and see this. I really love nah, this man, movie. I, 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 I love watching stupid criminals more than anything. <laughs> oh. Whenever I can find, just stumble upon a, a site on the internet that just has a compilation of that. I'll sit there all day. <laughs> yeah, Robert Panzer would be on that newspaper busted <laughs> every week. By the <laughs> man, that was, was I, I just can't say that. I tell you why I was laughing because I don't want to laugh at anybody dying, but that scream that happened when that when this person fell like, uh, uh. <laughs> I was like, man, you, why don't you? You were making me laugh at this. I don't want to, but I can't help it. Uh, yeah, everybody's like, you asshole. <laughs> You son that, of a that, bitch. That's so know. unnecessary. 
You know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think we've all laughed in serious movies. We would kill it in The Witch. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Eric turned that rabbit cake. Yo. <laughs> Black Phillip. Black Phillip. <laughs> in the I'm, same theater, too, in the violent crowd. <laughs> man, I'm sorry. That's another one. Somebody died. Black Phillip just... Man, he, he he stabbed the fuck out somebody. I was like, I ah! know. Coerce a dude into a pile of wood. <laughs> was right, went right up his ass. <laughs> and him and I went there. We just we were just laughing. Up. We were just laughing hard, man. I love the witch, man. The, the bitch, whatever. But I, I love that movie. But I wasn't scared at all. That was another comedy to me. <laughs> Shit, watch that with a double feature with good time. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Shut up.